When first learning regression or multiple regression, we often focus on examples in which the predictor is a continuous variable on an interval or ratio scale, things like hours studying, predicting grades, or maybe the amount of weekly exercise predicting cholesterol levels. Continuous interval ratio scales help us to illustrate the regression line and the slope. But you can also use categorical or nominal variables as predictors in multiple regression. Now, what do I mean by a categorical or nominal predictor? Just think back to scales of measurement. Categorical, also called nominal variables, are just variables that indicate groups. There's no continuum or, or range of scores. There's, there's no inherent ordering to the groups. Things like race, ethnicity, college major, the state in which you live, they have no inherent order, no, no sequence or numerical values tied to them. Now, to see how to use this type of data in a regression analysis, let's start with a little review using the most simple type of categorical data where we only have two groups. Now, for this example, let's use some real data from a project that I, that I did a few years ago with a now retired colleague, Steve Butterfield and his team. We were looking at differences in aerobic capacity based on whether a student did or did not have asthma. Aerobic capacity is how much oxygen the body can use in intense exercise. It's, it's a good thing related to health and fitness. So our predictor was asthma status, which reflected two groups, 102 students who had asthma and 687 students who did not. Our outcome was scores on the PACER, uh, an exercise test that reflects one's aerobic capacity. In it, you run back and forth at a steadily increasing pace with your score being the number of laps that you complete. Now, ignoring regression for a moment, Look at this. I mean, how else could we analyze this data? Two groups, a nice interval scale outcome. You could do a two independent samples t-test, couldn't you? So let's look at our results if we analyze this using two independent samples t-test. Okay, so here's our data. Uh, notice there's two clear groups, uh, 102 with asthma. They have a mean of 25.804 on the PACER. And we have 687 students without asthma. Notice they have a score, a mean of 30.028 on the PACER. Higher scores, higher aerobic capacity. Now remember these two means because we're going to come back to them, okay? Now let's look at the results for our t-test. Okay, here's the output. And sure enough, we have a, a t of negative 2.412 with 787 degrees of freedom that gives us a p-value of 0.016. That's less than 0.05, so we reject the null that the mean of the population of students with asthma is the same as the mean of the population of students without asthma. Now, notice the output also tells us that the difference between the two means was negative 4.224. That's the mean of the kids with asthma, 25.804, minus the mean for the kids without asthma, 30.028. Now, flashback, remember, that's the numerator in our t-test, that how big of a difference did I see part. But as we know, there will be some random difference in our sample means, 
even if the value really is the same in the population. We therefore use the standard error of the difference as our measuring stick for evaluating just how large that observed mean difference really is. It's the denominator in our t-score, that how big of a difference did I expect to see part. If we take the mean difference and divide by the standard error of the difference, we get our t-score. And the larger the t-score, right, the, the larger the difference is in a statistical sense, the, the less likely that we would have randomly stumbled on a difference of negative, four, negative 0.4224 in our sample means if the null were true and the means really were the same in the population. And notice we even have the 95% confidence intervals that tell us how precise we think that estimate of negative 4.224 difference really is. We're 95% confidence that the true difference in the population means is somewhere between negative 7.662 and negative 0.786. All right? So, that's our trip back to intro stats land and the t-test. Let's wrap up here for now, but remember these numbers because we're going to see how to get the exact same results in a regression analysis in our next video. All right, bye for now.